I've talked about my top 10 best games of 2022. You can watch that with the link below or wherever I put it or in an annotation. I don't know how YouTube works anymore. I'm a loser again. Now it's time for my most disappointing games of 2022. And again, I can only talk about games that I have played. So there are some stinkers out there. Like, for example, 13, the remake. Hey, the kangaroo. They didn't make the list. But there are some games I did play which weren't bad. But these are my most disappointing of 2022. Number 10, House of the Dead remake. Now, this game isn't bad. It's not terrible. But it's one fundamental flaw on it. Well, actually, this two. One, the motion controls just don't work very well at all on the Switch, man. It makes the game feel like it's kind of half a game, if that makes sense. Like, you're playing, it doesn't matter if you die, like, you just kind of watch, going along for the ride. Two, the original's better, even on the Sega Assassin, which runs like shit. The reason it's on this list is because I played the Switch version, I was like, that was really fun, I enjoyed that. Then I went and played it on my Sega Assassin the same day, and having the gun and shooting at the screen and having it actually work, it felt so much better, and the vibe was better as well. It wasn't as corny, and it was actually a bit more spooky because where the graphics were. So while it's not a bad game, I'm disappointed because I still play the original. And the remake, I played it once and haven't thought about it since until basically when I did this list. So what's that tell you? Number nine, Roller Dome. This one's a weird one because I actually love Roller Dome. It's really fun. It's got great mechanics. It's simple. The art style's great. But I'm disappointed because it wants me to keep replaying the same levels again to do challenges to unlock the next stage in the campaign. Now listen, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a very busy man. I ain't got time to replay levels over and over and over again just to get to the next one. So I was like, oh, I ain't got time for that. I want to just play a nice chill game, which is fun and just go through the levels and have a good time. I'm not about that life. And therefore, Roller Dome was a disappointment in that aspect. Number eight, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. Now, New Genesis is a reboot, essentially, of 2 with a new story and new characters and new gameplay mechanics, everything, right? And I'm a massive fan of Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. I played it religiously on the GameCube. And while I do like New Genesis, the problem is there's just no content content, or well, there wasn't when I played it anyway, no content whatsoever. Plus, the missions were very confusing. It was like, go do a photon burst. I'm like, what the hell is that? It took me two hours to figure it out. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And eventually, I just kind of gave up, and I thought, you know what? I, I, I ain't got time. This is just annoying me. I'm gonna have to call it quits. And I was so excited for this game, so that's why it makes this list. Seven, Mario Strikers. I bought this game at midnight when it came out, played it for about 40 minutes, and that's it. Barely any content. The gameplay mechanics are actually pretty convoluted. There's lots of extra bits and bobs, which I felt were really unnecessary. The control mapping was also confusing. I kept trying to shoot, but I kept passing instead. I'm pretty sure that was a problem I had anyway. It's a shame because I love the Mario Strikers games. The GameCube one and the Wii one was so cool, but this one just fell short, unfortunately, and it was just so forgettable. Six, Sonic Frontiers. I didn't hate Sonic Frontiers. I didn't really love Sonic Frontiers. It's disappointing because after the second world, I kind of found myself a bit bored of it. The gameplay loop was kind of annoying, and the volcano world just sucked, man. I basically skipped the whole game. I just did Big's fishing thing, and I did that on the third and the last world. And that's disappointing because I essentially tried to cheat the system just to get through the game and say I beat it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it could have been a lot better, but it wasn't terrible. Five, Multiverses. Another game which was really hype and I really enjoyed it for about an hour, then I just forgot it existed. I still forgot it existed until again this list. Very unmemorable, barely any content, no stages whatsoever. The game just feels very bare bones and the gameplay isn't fun enough to want to keep playing over and over and over again. It's not a bad game, it is very fun, but there's just not a lot of content there, not much to do, not much reason to keep playing. Four, Deathloop. Deathloop had so much hype, everybody seems to love this game, I guess. I tried for four hours, and I just could not get into it. Genuinely, I don't like games where when you die after about two hours or something, it sets you back. I'm not into that, and I know you get shortcuts and stuff, but I tried for four hours, okay? I just didn't find the gunplay very satisfying or that fun. I found the characters annoying. Didn't really care about the story to be honest. I just, I tried so hard with Deathloop, but I just didn't really care. Three, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Now, I think this game might have come out in 2021, actually, but I think I played it in 2022. <laughs> oh, regardless, it's on this list because I think it came out on Xbox or something this year anyway. But yeah, everybody loves Five Nights at Freddy for some reason. I never understood why. I think it's really lame. But I figured I'll give this one a go because it looked kind of cool. And you know what? I like the character designs. I like the graphic style. But when it comes to being an actual game, uh, it's not great. I'm not doing a worst games list this year. Just disappointing. And I'm disappointed because I wanted this game to turn me into a FNAF fan, you know? Show me why people love FNAF and why it's such a big thing. And sadly, it fell short massively. I quit the game after a few hours because I just found myself bored. It was frustrating and I didn't care. 
like it. Two, Chocobo GP. Another game I forgot that even came out. I remember buying this game at midnight, playing it for an hour, beating all the campaign or whatever it was, and then forgetting it existed. And I paid full price for it. What was I thinking? What sucks about this game, though, is that the levels suck. The race courses based on Final Fantasy games suck. They barely resemble what they're even meant to be based on. I don't know, and there wasn't that many characters, to be honest. I mean, Squall and Cloud and all those were behind some weird paywall thing, which I just can't stand. This game could have been pretty good. The biggest offender, though, is that it just plays a bit shit. It doesn't even feel good when you turn or anything. Just not a good game, man. Massive disappointment. And number one for my biggest disappointment of 2022, drum roll. Horizon Forbidden, I forget what it's called. Horizon West Dawn, the new the new one is on PS5. Now, I actually borrowed this from a friend of mine. And I didn't pay for it. So maybe that's why I didn't feel like I needed to stick around. I tried playing it for an hour, but I just couldn't find myself getting into it at all. I didn't really like the main character. I thought she was kind of boring. I didn't play the one before, so I didn't know what the hell was going on. And the explanation for it, I, again, I was like... Okay. And there were some four stealth parts at the beginning where I was like, ah, oh, no. The graphics are amazing, though, I will say that. I might go back and try and play this one again when I get some time, but at the moment, I was so disappointed because I thought this game was going to grip me and be incredible, but I just... Maybe because I've played it after playing Elden Ring for a bit, and as you know, I just love that game so much, and maybe that's why it felt a little bit flat. I don't know. Regardless, one day I hope to go back and play it. We'll see. And those are my most disappointing games of 2022. What are your most disappointing games of 2022? To leave a comment down below and like if you enjoyed it and all that YouTube stuff that I gotta say. Kill me.